As we saw, even the simplest production rules can introduce ambiguity. But maybe we can avoid it by rewriting our production rules. Let's consider regular grammars where the rules have a particularly simple form. For example, consider this language, and let's determine if the language is ambiguous. Now, since this is a lecture on ambiguity, the rules are ambiguous, because otherwise we wouldn't have introduced them, but you might want to find an example. The obvious source of ambiguity is this production rule where S could produce either AA or AB. And so let's see if we can construct the same string where our first step is either S produces AA or S produces AB. And so we have S produces AA and then we'll have A produce BA and then A produce the empty string. We could also start our production S produces AB and our goal is to end with the same string and we can do that because B could produce B. And since there are two leftmost derivations for AB, the language is ambiguous. Now, since this is a regular grammar, we can construct a non-deterministic finite automaton for it. Our states will be the non-terminal symbols, with S the starting state, and since A produces the empty string and B produces B, we'll introduce an accepting state F and modify our grammar rules accordingly. And so S either produces AA or AB, A produces BA or the empty string, B produces AB or BF. Now we can turn this non-deterministic finite automaton into a finite automaton by finding our transition function delta. So remember here our destination states are actually sets that we can get to. So from our starting state, input A will take us to either A or B, and any other input takes us nowhere. From state A, input B takes us to A, and input nothing takes us to F. From B, we will go to either B or F, and from F there's no path outwards. Now, notice we did introduce a new set, the set AB. So if we're in either A or B, and we read an A, we'll go to set B. If we read a B, though, we could either go to A or to the accepting state. And this introduces a new set, AF. And so from AF, there's nothing that tells us what we do if we receive an A. But if we receive a B, we'll go to A, and if we receive the empty string, we'll go to F. And so our corresponding finite automaton has six states, and we can recover that automaton. And since this is a finite automaton, we can write a new description of our context-free grammar. So we have our states with our start state S. If we read an A, we go to the state A, B. From state A, if we read a B, we go back to itself, while if we read the empty string, we go to F. From B, we can read an A and go back to B, or a B and go to F. From AB, an A takes us to B, and a B takes us to AF. And from AF, a B takes us to A, and an empty string takes us to F. And for convenience, we'll relabel our non-accepting states. So S produces AX. X produces either AY or BZ. Y produces AY or BF. Z produces BW or empty string F. W produces BW or empty string F. But also remember that our state F originated from transitions like B produces a symbol. So it's just a placeholder string that at this point we can omit. 
So note that earlier we determined that AB had two leftmost derivations under the original grammar rules. But since we now have a deterministic finite automaton, there is only one path that processes any given string. Consequently, there is only one possible derivation. Or is there? Well, let's verify that AB has a unique derivation. So from S, the only thing we can produce is AB, and the only thing we can produce from there is BZ, and the only thing we can do at that point is replace Z with the empty string, and there is no other derivation possible.